just don't know. They all look so white. It's very hard to choose. Yes, this sheet is definitely whiter. I'd say this sheet was definitely washed in new fresh coal. Well, that's all very interesting, Mrs. Brown, but just identify your husband's body with you. <laughs> mid-morning here at the busy accident unit of St. Gregory's Teaching Hospital, Slough. And I'm here this morning because I've accidentally stuck my fingers together <laughs> with super glue. Keep the noise down, will you, please, sir? <laughs> oh, lad, no point hanging about here. The poll tax. It's the government's way of telling you to murder your family. <laughs> Dino Capella will die today. In just a few minutes from now, he will go to the chair for committing a series of horrific murders that shocked America. Hi, I'm Bud Clark. <laughs> In a special telecast, we've been allowed to film inside the death cell on the actual day of execution. MBS TV and our sponsors, Honey Yum, the yummy honey flavored <laughs> weedy cake that gives you a sunshine start to the day, brings you death of a combo. <laughs> One can only guess what is going through Dino's mind at this moment in time. A mind which just minutes from now will be brain dead. <laughs> and here we see the priest, Father Patrick O'Malley, offering some comfort to this condemned man, Dino Capella. Fortitude, Dino. Cut. Okay, uh, MBS TV, Father. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, Lou. Yep. Okay. We're having a problem with sound. I wonder if you could just say th something for level. Level? What do you mean? That's great, folks. <laughs> yeah, just keep it like that. Okay, keep the energy going and, and just relax. You know, kind of enjoy yourself. Okay, go <laughs> quiet, everybody. Quiet. And action. Dino. Oh, Father. Fortitude, my son. Did the priest say fortitude last time? <laughs> Continuity, Father. Uh, he did. He did. Okay, okay, okay. And moving along and in your own time, Father. <laughs> I'm scared, Father. God is with you, my son. <gasps> but I don't want to die. We whoa, all whoa, have whoa, to whoa, die. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, excuse me, Father. Uh, Dino, we're just wondering if you can beef up that line. I don't want to die. But I don't want to die. That's great, Dino. Yeah. We want another one like that. And remember, America's watching. <laughs> I don't want to die. <laughs> and now, Warden Brown is coming into the cell. The man who will be throwing the switch on Dino. <laughs> Time to go, Dino. His nose is shining. Make up. <laughs> Time to go, Dino. Okay, uh, hold it there. I'm, I'm sorry, but, uh, you know, uh, could you sort of deliver it with a bit more edge? Could you say something like, um, Dino, it's time to go. It's time for you to fry in the electric chair. That's not, I okay, that's great. That. That's great. Okay, and quiet, everybody. Yep. Okay, and action. Dino, it's time for you to go. It's time for you to... F to f uh... Is it time for me to fry in the electric chair, Warren? Electric chair, that's it. Okay, son, let's go. Be brave, Dino. Have a nice day. <laughs> Good evening, the news headlines. Disaster. Yet another earthquake in Chile. New threat to the West as Libya buys nuclear warheads from China. 
and a disastrous start for England in the first test. But first the news read through rose-tinted spectacles. <laughs> Following recent criticism, Mrs. Thatcher has admitted that, yes, lately she has been getting things rather badly wrong. She humbly begs everyone's forgiveness and has promised to step down and hand over the reins to Sir Harry Seacombe. There's been an outbreak of harmony in the Middle East today as Israeli and Palestinian troops met on the Lebanese border. After chatting amiably over ice cream and Yorkshire pudding, they all lay down together to indulge in group sex. Soccer. And in <laughs> Munich today, following England's 27-0 victory over West Germany, 500 English fans were awarded the Iron Cross for their exemplary behaviour. And after much speculation, Cliff Richard and the Archbishop of Canterbury have finally announced their engagement. <laughs> Steve, I'm well odd. <laughs> my tastes are for the opera, playing polo, and weekending in Paris with my secretary. My tastes are lager, shafting, <laughs> and kicking in heads. I have a penchant for antique furniture. I'll have a pension when I retire. <laughs> my other half's called Sharon. She's a bit of all right. My other half's called Leslie. He's a boxer. <laughs> I hate people who destroy the environment. I hate people. <laughs> my idea of a good time is to step into my luxurious Mercedes car, having eaten a very expensive meal washed down by the finest of wines and a couple of glasses of Remy Martin. Then I drive home to my Surrey mansion at 120 miles an hour. My idea of having a good time is getting in my white three-litre rover with a flashing blue light on the top and nicking pillocks like you. <laughs> you see this? This is a Magnum. The most powerful handgun in the Western world. Capable of blowing a man's leg off at 30 metres. And this... Is a rubber chicken. <laughs> you feel lucky, punk. <laughs> I'm standing in the grounds of Gorton Manor Hospice in Berkshire. And up there, isolated and completely cut off from the rest of the world, languishes the sad, lonely, and wretched figure of Bernard Pearson. You see, Bernard Pearson is one of those people who suffers from really bad breath. <laughs> Oh, Bernard, when, when did you first notice you suffered from really bad breath? Well, I suppose I was about 19 at the time. <laughs> and naturally enough, I started to get interested in girls. Yes, sir. A uh, pint of bitter, please. <laughs> Say no more, sir. <laughs> Hello, how are you? You've been eating dead rats. You see, the dreadful fact about having really bad breath is you're the only one who doesn't notice it. Cheers. <laughs> I put that episode down to me having a Turkish takeaway for my tea. But I thought no more about it till the next day at work. Yes? Uh, good morning, madam. I represent a firm of air conditioning experts at present in your area. And, uh, I wondered if you had a few moments. Perhaps I could show 
Shut up. I tried different remedies, different diets. I even tried not eating at all. But it was no good. So like many desperate people, well, I turned to the church for comfort and solace. <laughs> So I became an unwanted misfit, a social outcast, shunned by society I was. So you decided to <laughs> cut yourself off? Yeah, they brought me here. Now I live the life of a recluse, till a proper cure can be found. <laughs> until a proper cure can be found. That interview took place six months ago behind locked doors. I'm sure for all of those who know Bernard personally, you will all be delighted when I announce that he is still safely locked away. <laughs> Thank God. Australian men are a good drop of the amber throat wash when they see it. In fact, they've only got to see one to want one. <laughs> Unfortunately, Australian beers affect the parts other beers can't reach. Australians haven't had a good experience <laughs> in years. This week on the show, we got lots of different things for you. Excuse me. Hello? He's in intensive care. <laughs> Good. <laughs> anyway, as I was saying, this week on the... <laughs> yeah? It's for you. To consider floating my US interests in a separately quoted subsidiary, yours, etc., etc. They have? Good. Why the Schroeder Group and arrange 50 billion credit? The Redfern Sturgis buy out. Yes. They're still resisting. Raise our offer another billion. Billion. The 18th. New York. No, I'm in New York on the 18th. Reschedule and get back to me. Ten points down, sell half and take an option on 20k consolidated holdings. Morning coffee. Bourbon or custard cream? Bourbon. I'll have the custard cream at... 3.30. 3.30. <laughs> Chancellor, line one. Nigel, baby. <laughs> no, look, I'll phone you back. I will call you back, I promise. <laughs> and you. Mr Knowles? Yes? Hong Kong? Uh, excuse me. Ho Fao Chu Long Dollar Ho Chang Kong Mr Mr. Knowles. Yes, yes, yes. What is it? Uh, my name's Pendleton. I'm from the DHSS. Yes, look, keep talking, keep talking. Get me Henderson in Rio. Mr. Knowles, I'll come straight to the point. We are considering stopping your dole money. <laughs> Henderson! Uh, Henderson, meet me in Montreal on the... Um, 15th. On the 15th and bring the global fund contract with you. Now, what do we say, Mr... Um... We cannot allow you to sign on the dole any longer, Mr. Knowles. <laughs> What are you talking about? Excuse uh, me. For you, Sir Cable Grant from Singapore, the agenda for the Brussels conference, and your unemployment gyro check. <laughs> unemployment. Miss Gardner, do I sign on the dole? Every Thursday, 11.15 a.m. There you are. Satisfied? No, I'm not satisfied, Mr. Knowles. Well, what's your problem? Can't you see I'm a very busy problem man? The problem is, Mr. Knowles, we have reason to believe that you've been cheating the system. Cheating the system? No, no, put the white walls on the Lamborghini and the satellite dish on the Porsche. Now, will you get to the point, Mr. Um... We are not idiots, Mr. Knowles. We've been following you for several weeks. Paris, Sydney, Los Angeles. Is this possible? And it's our guess that you couldn't manage to do all of this on £33.50 a week gold money. <laughs> we therefore suspect you're earning extra income. Miss Gardner, how much do I earn in a week? 24000 
Plus £33.50 doll money. <laughs> £24,000, that's twice what I earn in a year. You could earn more. How? Sign on the dole, I won't tell anybody. Now, if you don't mind... Mr Noll, you have committed a very serious offence. An offence for which you could be put behind bars and furthermore... Yes, 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 yes. Look, it's an oversight on my part and I apologise. Very well, Mr Knowles. In that case, the department will take no further action as long as you sign off the unemployment register right now. Very well. Mr Knowles, my pen. <laughs> Tight git. <laughs> Readings from my latest anthology. Ain't got no daddy o. Bastardia. <laughs> By Groovy Wordbender. That tramp is a lady. That lady's my baby. There ain't no maybe. Groovy baby. <laughs> and when we kissed her, she's so irresisto. Her breasts taste of bisto. <laughs> Gravy booby. <laughs> Pence, please, sir, just the price of a cup of tea. Oh, yes, please, Miss Travener, I've got kids yes, to yes, feed. Yes, yes, yes. Bloody nurses. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Billy. Hello, Johnny. Hello, Hello everyone. everyone. <laughs> Today, we're in the operating theatre. And today, we're going to play a game of doctors and nurses. We've got lots of lovely toys. <laughs> and we're going to use these toys when we play with our friend William. Aren't we, William? <laughs> it's time for the anaesthetic now. Anaesthetic? That's a very long word, isn't it? <laughs> we know a song about that, don't we? <laughs> dream, 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 dream. <laughs> there. William's dreaming now. So it's time for Billy to take out his tonsils. Hi-ho, snip, hi-ho, snip, it's off to work we go. <laughs> Billy? Yes, Johnny? I don't think that's where William keeps his tonsils. <laughs> Ooh, I think I've made a mistake. <laughs> we know a song about that, don't we? <laughs> he had a lovely bunch of coconuts. <laughs> but he hasn't any more. <laughs> Still, It'll take his mind off his sore throat. <laughs> We've got to go now. But remember, if you want to keep your coconuts... Then don't sleep with my wife like William did. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. After the programme, me and Ron are going to a showbiz bash. Yeah. We're going to beat the crap out of Bruce Forsyth. <laughs> Showbiz parties, but as we say, if you can't beat them, I'm not going. <laughs> you know, Joe, this is the worst day of my entire life. Yeah, two big impresarios are in to see the show this evening, and we don't have a song. Well, here's one I've just finished, but. Uh, we've got a show, and we'll show you a show. Hey, <laughs> this is great! <laughs> Hit it, Joe! Come on, everybody, let's do it tonight. We're ready to roll, we'll be hitting the heights. We've got a show, and we know it's a hit. Cause it's full of knackered cliches, and fits the dome rhyme. Rhymes that don't fit! It's a word that's got fizz 
Time for you, Philip, but try and take your mind off it, you know. Try and forget about it. Oh, by the way, I brought you a present. <laughs> <laughs> 